Red clover. This is a new look at an old crop for today's farm. It's a report of advanced ag systems research for New York Farm Viability Institute, which funded this work. Successful dairy livestock production is growing energy, protein, digestible fiber, in sufficient amounts and low enough cost. It's not just corn and alfalfa. In New York, 40% of the northern lake soils, most of the Hudson Valley lake soils, and many of the southern tier upland soils are not suited for alfalfa, but red clover thrives on these. Is red clover as good or better than alfalfa? Red clover in a high forage diet of a high producing dairy cow has feed value equal or exceeding alfalfa. Red clover contains enzymes that inhibit protein breakdown for more bypass protein than alfalfa, so you have lower ration costs. And red clover inhibits hyperammonia rumen bacteria from breaking protein down to inefficiently used ammonia. Thus, it increases the metabolizable energy for milk. Earlier research found that red clover had higher NDF digestibility than alfalfa, so theoretically you could cut it later. Unfortunately, the cows did not milk on this later cut red clover. This research found the key reasons why. This research was designed to answer two questions. When is the optimum time to start red clover harvest in the spring compared to alfalfa? And what is the milk producing ability of red clover compared to alfalfa? The study was located in four New York counties, Columbia, a warm low location, Delaware, a high cool location, Lewis, a northern location with lake effect clouds and temperature, and Essex next to the Canadian border. Each had replicated strips of high digestible alfalfa with a strip of modern red clover variety. Unfortunately, the alfalfa did not establish at the Essex site. The interesting finding is that to reach 40 NDF level, the same as alfalfa, no site was more than two to three days later than the alfalfa. And in the Delaware case, the clover was ready a week ahead of alfalfa. For all the sites, Clover was only about a day or two behind the alfalfa. So farms that cut clover well after alfalfa are assuring themselves of poor quality forage from the clover because of their management. Work by Dr. Cherney at Cornell found that plant height can be used to determine the optimum time for cutting alfalfa. We tested the same process and found that red clover is 40 NDF, about one to three inches shorter than the alfalfa. Again, reinforcing the previous slide that showed clover needs to be cut almost the same time as alfalfa. As can be seen in these graphs, the red clover yielded more in just one cutting than most alfalfa will yield all year in five to six cuttings. This is not unusual, as in the Cornell red clover variety trials, it regularly out yields alfalfa in the second year. Work out of Wisconsin found that only three or four cuttings are needed for red clover, so it reduces the machinery cost 25% compared to five or six cuttings for alfalfa that may not yield as much. The key is how red clover fits in today's high producing dairy rations. On a crude protein basis, red clover normally runs a few points under alfalfa, but this is just part of the story. Alfalfa's protein is more highly degraded in the rumen than red clover. This means very, very expensive bypass protein needs to be added to meet the needs of the cow. The slightly lower red clover protein has much more bypass protein, less rumen degraded protein, which means the ration doesn't need as much of the expensive bypass concentrated protein to be added. Dr. Cheney's research has found that legumes are nearly completely digested in 12 hours. Red clover equal or exceeded the alfalfa in 12 hour digestibility when both were harvested at 40 NDF level. Unfortunately, most nutritionists are focused on 30 hour NDF, which is not the true picture of rumen digestion of legumes. 
the undigested portion or rumen fill as measured by UNDF 240 is less for red clover, indicating the higher nutrient use by every pound of dry matter from red clover. A very critical aspect is that red clover stores nutrients as sugar and pectin, while alfalfa stores more energy in cellular starch. Using traditional narrow swath, multi-day drying systems will respire nearly all the sugars off before ensiling. This is most likely the foundation of reports of cattle not wanting to eat red clover, regardless of the cutting dates. This loss of energy would also have a negative effect, along with the late harvest date, on the ability of red clover to sustain high milk production. Clover is known to store considerable energy in the form of pectin. There is no direct measurement for pectin, but it is captured in the measurement of NFC, or non-fiber carbohydrate. Across all three sites, red clover had considerably higher NFC than did the alfalfa. With red clover energy and palatability dependent on capturing the plant sugar and the pectins, our research found it is critical that the harvest system rapidly dry and ensile the red clover the same day it is mowed. To accomplish this, it needs to be mowed to a swath greater than 80% of the cutter bar width. Do not have any deflector shields as this produces non-drying lumps. For the first cutting on the second year of harvest, tedding two hours after mowing will allow the crop to dry for ensiling the same day. Tedding is not needed on the second or third cut. It is highly recommended that you ensile the same day you mow in order to preserve the sugars and the pectins that supply the energy and to use an inoculant to rapidly ferment the crop, further preserving that energy. We took the analysis of the above research and entered it into the Cornell Net Carbohydrate and Protein Systems model as a 64% forage diet comprised of 60% corn silage and 40% haylage. Dr. Larry Chase, Professor Emeritus at Cornell, then switched the legumes in and out with no change in grain to see the impact of the legume choice at 40 NDF. For the warm early site, the clover had slightly higher metabolizable energy, but lower metabolizable protein, which was not unexpected as the clover had lower protein levels. At the high cool site, there was a significant advantage for red clover in metabolizable energy and metabolizable protein compared to alfalfa. Remember, this was the site where red clover was ready to harvest a week before alfalfa. For the northern cool lake effect site, both alfalfa and red clover were nearly identical in the milk supported by energy and protein. This was one of the sites where red clover yielded more in one cut than most alfalfa does all season. Farmers often express concern over the short three-year rotation of red clover. When part of a whole farm program, the shorter rotation keeps yields at the highest part of the rotation cycle. Comparing a three-year corn and six-year alfalfa rotation to a two-year corn with winter forage and a three-year red clover rotation, you can increase your yields 35% over the longer rotation. Then finally, clover has a reputation for not producing when conditions turn dry. The issue is not because of the clover, but rather because it is grown on less than ideal soils. Nearly every down-drained field I have looked at has been plowed when it was too wet sometime in the past and now has severe compaction zone limiting roots to the top six inches. In this picture, we deep-tilled on 30-inch rows when it was in corn. Rotated to clover, we had an extended drought where both alfalfa and clover died back. When it rained again, the clover grew fine on one-foot bands on a 30-inch center where the compaction had been removed. Red clover is an underestimated crop on many dairy livestock farms. 
managed correctly in short rotation, it can produce very high yields of very high quality forage. We thank the New York Farm Viability Institute for supporting this research project.